remember when YouTubers used to be really cool, like 10 years ago. Hello and welcome back to the world of home automation with your host Paul Hibbert, that'll be me. Switch the rear lights on. And that guy was awesome. What a guy. I mean, he wasn't, he was a complete doofus. But he did make some of the best smart home automations ever. And I was kind of thinking, do I not do that anymore? And the answer is yes. I've made loads of really cool automations over the last few years. And so without further ado, this video is all the really cool smart home automations that I've created recently. And they're gonna graduate from really straightforward to super complicated over the course of the video. Enjoy. We'll start with the absolute easiest of easy smart home automations, and that's my outside lights. But this is an often overlooked, really straightforward thing to do that almost anybody can implement, and it's really, really cheap. But most importantly, it's a scalable thing. You could make this much more complicated if you want to and make it an even better solution. If you have any outside lights of any description, just pop in a smart home bulb. There are an abundance of different varieties from E27s to GU10s. And personally, I have some GU10s in my outside lights from a company called Ajax. Their Zignito range is really bright and really colorful and they've worked perfectly as outside lights for me. And once your smart home bulbs are in place, just hide the light switch from your stupid, stupid family. I'm kidding. I mean, they, they probably won't keep turning off your smart home bulbs. They, you, they'll probably just do as they're told. You just tell them and they'll, they won't do it. No, keep doing it. Wow! The land of make-believe! They definitely will. So, you can either do one of three things. You could install a smart light switch. Which I am going to do. You could actually just wire the switch to be permanently live, cover the wiring over with a cover plate, and then control the bulbs directly using your smart home equipment. Or you could use what I call marriage savers, which is little things that just go over the switch to stop people pressing them. You could then use Amazon Alexa routines or home assistant automations to have these lights come on automatically at sunset and go off at say 11.30 at night. You could even have them react to your video doorbell or an IKEA motion sensor, because the IKEA motion sensors are splash proof at the very least, and then have them come on whenever somebody approaches the house. The added bonus being, of course, that if you have coloured RGB lights, you could set them up for doing things like Christmas themes or Halloween, or scaring off burglars by having them flash red whenever your house alarm goes off. The scalability of this solution is really, really cool, and definitely something you should be thinking about. So is that, um, was that one a good? A good automation, or too obvious? Thank you, Captain Obvious. How would we ever know unless you were here to tell us? You're welcome, citizen! Away! Right. How about this one, then? You could use a smart home contact sensor on your gamepad so that every time you pick your gamepad up from its stand, it turns your living room into gaming mode. I did this with my Broadlink RM4 Pro, which blasted infrared signals to switch on everything from my Xbox to my projector, and even some infrared battery-powered candles. But if you have a smart TV and an Xbox, you could actually turn both on using Amazon Alexa skills that you can enable right now for free. Your only purchase, if you wanted to do exactly what I have done in that case, would be a contact sensor. And there's one very cheaply in my description now if you're interested in picking one up. Go check the link down there. And this is another really scalable solution because you could use Amazon Alexa, or you could do an awful lot more using Home Assistant, with everything from locking your front door to using a Broadlink RM4 Pro to lower the projector screen, switch candles on, and do all those good things that I did. And it's really easy to do in Home Assistant. All you've got to do is get your head around using Broadlink to send remote commands using a service call as part of a routine in Home Assistant. Very easy. Alright, not easy, but doable. Um, this has nothing to do with anything, but I've just found a TikTok channel devoted entirely to a man sharing food with his dog. I won't be needing these anymore. Don't subscribe to men sharing food with their dog. Subscribe to me, who won't even share food with his wife.
And now, a word from our sponsor, Paperlike. Reginald, you got a new iPad for Christmas, didn't you? And you still draw directly onto the iPad's glass using a stylus, don't you? Well, you shouldn't, you half-witted nincompoop. Drawing directly onto your iPad's glass is for trash people. If you're serious about your artwork and note-taking, then you need a screen protector designed specifically with digital artists in mind. Not a screen protector designed for backwards hicks like this preposterous Jim Henson escaped puppet. Just like its predecessor, Paperlike 2, Paperlike 2.1 has the tactile feel of paper. But now, with upgraded visual clarity, you can see your note-taking and drawings with minimal shifts in color balance and ye- Reginald, is that a cat? It's pathetic. Visit the link in my description now to buy Paperlike 2.1 exclusively from Paperlike.com for selected iPads and get a free digital pro planner with every purchase. And now, back to our main feature. Nisha has arrived safely at work. Now this one will do one of two things. You'll either go, Oh, this is perfect! I'll be able to tell if little Mercedes got to school on time! Or you'll wrap your head in tinfoil because you think your minute by minute whereabouts is of value to some shady government operative who is trying to unlock the secret codes in your head that will turn you into a mindless slave that only lives to fund Downing Street. They already did this. It's called taxes. You, you pay them already. Idiot. But because this particular automation is very specific to Home Assistant, and because Home Assistant is a very private and localized solution, you don't really have a lot to worry about. Me and Nisha are one of those sickeningly loved up couples that every time we go somewhere, it's like, well, text me when you get there, won't you? I need to know, I need to know that you're okay, that you arrived safely. And then if we don't get a text message because they forgot, then... Oh my god, he's dead. That's exactly how my wife talks. Um, and if you want to avoid all this, it's simply a case of installing Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, and this is as straightforward as taking some files from an SD card and then just plugging them into the Pi and turning it on. That's how simple it is to actually install an instance of Home Assistant. From there, you install a companion app on each of your phones, which is again, just downloading something from the store. And you can then create a routine in Home Assistant that says, when Nisha arrives at the target location, make an announcement on my Amazon Echo to let me know she got there safely. From there, you can spy on your loved ones all you like. Brilliant. You weirdo. So you're watching Star Trek in bed like the preposterous nerd that you are, and all of a sudden a doorbell goes and you've got a notification going off in your pocket. So you squeeze your phone out of your jeans, get it in front of your fat face, unlock the phone, pull down the notification window, click the notification, and then wait for Nest to load, which of course takes a preposterously long time. And then you realize it's some asshole you don't even want to speak to. What if instead, you could have it so that Star Trek was playing and was automatically interrupted by your Nest Video doorbell as soon as it was pressed. You could actually ignore this massive dumbass without ever getting your phone out of your pocket. How cool would that be? What you've just watched is from a tutorial that I made a couple of years ago that you can go and watch here or here wherever it is. And it basically takes you through all of the steps and you can see for yourself how to do this using any Android based TV or Nvidia Shield to load up literally any camera feed from any manufacturer, even if they don't have the ability to act as part of a routine in Amazon Alexa. But don't get, don't go there yet. Uh, th this is last resort stuff, this tutorial. It's really quite a complicated way of doing it. And it's only if you're in a situation where you want to load it on an Nvidia Shield or an Android TV. If you have a Fire Stick or a Fire TV Cube, there is a much, much easier way of achieving this. And I'm gonna take you through it now. As long as you have a doorbell that is capable of starting an Amazon Alexa routine, then you can create a customized endpoint. People often forget just how powerful this customized endpoint is. I can type in any voice command and the routine will run as if I spoke to it, like this. Okay.
Now, if you have HDMI CEC turned on in your Fire Sticks settings, it will actually automatically turn the TV on and then give you the feed, even if your TV is off, which is really cool, but if you're out of the house visiting friends and someone rings the doorbell, it's gonna turn your TV on and it's gonna stay on indefinitely until you come and turn it off. There is only one way around this that I can think of using Amazon Alexa, and that would be to set a little timer that says, after two minutes, turn the TV off. Again, this is fine unless you were watching the TV at the time, in which case it's going to turn your TV off. But if you've answered the door, maybe that's something you want. Could actually work out well. So I showed you guys recently how I was able to use my Flick Twist as a demo for a smart bulb, and how I was able to use it as a controller to load my favorite streaming services on my Nvidia Shield. That was a complicated affair using Home Assistant. Bespoke configuration .yaml files. But you could also do this exact same thing with a Fire Stick and an Alexa routine without Home Assistant very easily using the customized endpoint we just discussed. I also showed you how you could use it as a Spotify button for skipping tracks, loading playlists, and playing and pausing music, and even as a controller for your central heating to control any smart home-based thermostat, and three of you responded to say, What's the point? Completely pointless. Compile it. Play it. All, all of that was... Someone complained in the comments the other day that I shouldn't be using that joke, that uh, I shouldn't be abusing myself. Why break the habit of a lifetime? Disgusting. Second of all, don't watch any cartoons, will you? Don't believe what they do to that roadrunner. Anyway, if you haven't already thought of it, the other very obvious use for the flick twist is this. As I've already pointed out, your family don't give a toss about your smart bulbs. I have, in the past, wired my light switch to be permanently on and attached a simple flick button over the top of a blanking plate to control my dining room smart lights. But can you imagine how much cooler that would be if you put a flick twist in its place? This thing can start Amazon Alexa routines, which means that you can get it to control anything. You could use the push button to actually turn the lights on and off, the dial to dim the lights up and down, and a push and twist to get this thing to set a particular playlist going on your dining room speakers. If you want one, as usual, link's in the description. What do you guys reckon? Let me know in the comments if you've got better ideas or if you've implemented these same ideas in your house. I would love to learn from you guys too. We are a community. It would be great for you to be able to share those things with other people. In the meantime, this video was brought to you by these incredible people. They're my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. I'd be in a call center somewhere. I'm thanking one of them every week, and this week it's Duncan Pinto. Thank you, Duncan, for letting me know recently that Patreon had decided to just cancel his subscription. Thank you, Patreon, you bunch of if you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my X's and my threads and my Instagrams and my TikToks. Come and hang out there and keep your best friends. See you next time. I don't know why I then looked at the camera and my eyeballs wouldn't be in this sockets. <laughs> Little Mercedes got to school on time! Tie, 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 I... Don't know what accent this is. <laughs>